40 years ago, the Democratic Party chose South Dakota Senator George McGovern as its presidential nominee. The convention began less than a month after five men were arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate office building in Washington. McGovern broke with traditional Democratic constituencies and reached out to more women, minorities, and young voters. He won only one state and lost to President Richard Nixon in an Electoral College landslide. McGovern is now 90 years old and writing his memoir. I interviewed him earlier this year. He believes Watergate ushered in a new era of American politics. Uh, it does seem now that political figures are more interested in getting something on their opponent than they are selling their own ideas as to what constitutes a way to improve the country or to improve the uh, locale, depending on the office that is being uh, sought. So uh, the positive thing, as I've said, is that uh, uh, Watergate makes clear that you can pay a price for wrongdoing when it's exposed to the public. And the bad thing about it is it inclines politicians to spend too much time, I think, searching in the closet of other politicians in order to get something on them rather than discussing the central problems before the country. How will negative campaigning ever change as long as attacks work? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, because <clears throat> once you make uh, a serious attack on an opponent, if it's cleverly worded, uh, some of that tends to stick, even though the opponent may attempt to uh, respond to it. Some of it ordinarily stick. oh yeah, here's the guy, they said about him so-and-so. And, -so. and you, you get those things thrown, thrown back at you. So uh, slam-bang campaigning, I think, is a threat to uh, honest uh, decision-making. Senator McGovern, how have the parties changed since you ran for president 40 years ago? They're more negative now. They're more bombastic. They're more uh, nitpicking. They, uh, there's not as, not as much thoughtful reflection and as much uh, informed debate and discussion of the issues between the two parties as we need and as I think there used to be in, in days gone by. I don't think the average American voter wants a candidate that's either too extreme on the left or too, ex too extreme uh, on the right. We tend to, uh, you know, between the two parties, we tend to have ground here that's sufficiently broad so that in some cases, uh, Democrats, such as myself, may be inclined to vote for a Republican candidate. I've done that more than once. Some of the uh, uh, Republicans may be inclined to vote a, a Democrat if, if we're not so far apart that we can't even reach each other. So I think it's too bad that uh, we've gotten so uh, uh, divided, so uh, the, where the gaps are so great between the two parties. It must pain you to see Republicans and Democrats not getting along. Do you believe that members of the two parties can come together again and work together for the country? Absolutely they can. They've got to quit viewing the other party as the enemy. I don't regard Republicans as my enemy. I never have. Uh, they're a decent, intelligent, uh, honorable, people, the same as I like to think I am. So I don't regard them as the enemy. I regard them as competitors. Uh, you know, when you're in business up and down Main Street, you don't regard the guy on the store across the street as your enemy. He's your competitor. He goes to the same church, maybe. He goes to the same clubs. His children weep the same as ours. and. Uh, so we, we, we need to treat each other not only as human beings, but as fellow citizens of a great country. What do you believe are the winning arguments for the presidential candidates in 2012? 
I think uh, for, for Romney, uh, his, uh, his strongest uh, arguments would be something that he hasn't taken advantage of to date, and that is that health care plan that he put through when he was governor of Massachusetts. That's been the envy of governors all over the country. And he's, he's the one that installed it. But when he ran for president this last year, he kind of disowned it uh, because he sensed that there was a, a more uh, conservative and cautious uh, view in his party and that if he was going to get that nomination, he had to move to where the Republican delegates are going to be. But I think that's probably his strongest point, that he... Uh, engineered the first successful uh, health care for all uh, program in the state of Massachusetts, which people up there are very proud of. And I think it, uh, he ought to say, I'd, if I become president, I'll uh, try to do some other innovative things like that that haven't yet perhaps been, been tried. But I don't want to give him too much good advice because I don't want him to win. I want the I want Barack Obama uh, to win, and I think he will. And I think what he has to do is to uh, defend the programs that he has initiated since he became office. And he's also got to defend other programs that he accepted without criticism and explain them. I think he's done his best. He's a young man, he's a young president. Uh, I, I, I think if he's re-elected, which I expect to, to see, I think he'll be stronger and uh, better motivated and uh, better positioned to be a strong president in the next four years than he has during this learning period that's gone on since he was, he was elected. You suffered a big loss to Richard Nixon in 1972. How have you reconciled that loss and how it all played out in your political career? Well, I've always known that if that Watergate scandal had been uncovered before the election, I probably would have won the presidency instead of Nixon. What that said to me, George, you lost, but you didn't lose your soul. <laughs>